behest of MJ or not. Okay, I think that's the case. MJ called Nicole. Nicole then uh, called MBI, and all of a sudden, uh, three, you know, uh, bigwigs, for lack of a better term, uh, from MBI showed up on the phone call immediately, as soon as MJ had read through the letter. So, um, you know, again, using the squeaky wheel gets greased analogy, um, the squeaking worked to to the extent of being able to get in front of MBI when we've been rebuffed over and over again. OK, um, so I can't disagree uh, with her approach or her conclusion that the uh, uh, the letter at that point would be superfluous and, uh, uh, you know, again, somewhat aggressive at that point. And uh, her points had already been made. <laughs> OK, um, now I'm going to move forward to some of the stuff that she covered. Again, this was an hour phone call and we spent, you know, 40 minutes about it talking about that procedure. Uh, uh, the next part of the call was to talk about some of the specifics. And uh, uh, so the first we went through the uh, the CAI list and uh, um, she mentioned specifically, she talked about some of the the not approved uh, initially rejected CAIs like uh, uh, the Barlow's public landing. And, and um, uh, MJ went through and said, any communication down there is terrible. Uh, we ought to have uh, uh, communication there, and uh, the the they should have re, uh, recognized that. Further, the outlying buildings at at uh, Mass Military, uh, Mass Maritime, uh, clearly are are community anchors, and those should be, should have been recognized. And and she got that, and that's as far as we went in terms of the extreme detail. Um, uh, I just got a post from Jen McGrail that they're back on the air again and they have audio. Um, uh, uh, Jen, for your information, we have a full recording of the Zoom going on too. So if you want to patch that in uh, for the missing piece, you're, uh, you're welcome to, uh, to do that later on. We'll, we'll send you the recording from the, uh, our recording of the Zoom call, which is overlapping with your broadcast right now. Um, uh, and then we pointed out that, um, again, uh, people put a lot of effort, thousands of, of speed tests uh, to try to try to document things that went down, including on uh, on July 4th. Uh, MJ uh, said over that weekend, magically, um, the second or third time she tried the speed test, all of a sudden her speeds went way up, curiously, and and made no further comments about that. Okay. Um, and, uh, and I said, uh, that's not, a um, an unusual experience for some of us, but we did get, uh, uh, a, a census block group, at least one, uh, that satisfied the, uh, the six sets of tests, uh, and it's on their record. I don't know whether she said that explicitly to the, uh, um, to the MBI people, um, having said that. Uh, the MBI people, at least, she said, seems familiar with uh, with uh, some of our uh, uh, command uh, complaints, lamentations, etc., and that uh, um, they were at least aware of them. They didn't say they were going to reverse them. They didn't say they were going to do anything else, but they were at least aware of them. <clears throat> um, they then went through the explanation to say uh, that all of the rebuttal process was. Uh, just one of logging everything in, irrespective of um, whether the rebuttal had any basis or not. Um, and they were busily going through those um, during the um, the adjudication process. And uh, they have, uh, there are very, they know of, uh, they repeated to MJ the strict rules that they had for satisfying a um, a rebuttal and adjudicating it. Uh, and they were holding every single one of those uh, uh, to the test. And they, they made, uh, uh, they assured her that, and she said she was going to rely on that. Um, uh, and uh, again, uh, uh, then they said the whole process is going to be sent to NTIA um, for a, uh, uh, a review or an audit of some sort. Um, and um, unclear exactly how, to me, um, and I've expressed it to her, how NTIA could could possibly do that for all of these coming in from all corners of the country. 
because uh, they can't have a, a they've got consultants. Um, pardon me, uh, you know, they have any consultant they want. They can put extra time on for consultants to get this done. Having been the consultant to a big government agency in a time crunch. Um, but um, so that will go through. Uh, that will take uh, you know, six weeks, maybe two months. Uh, and then after that, they're going to list, uh, release the list of those who are eligible. Um, and at, and MJ said, you know, at this point, uh, uh, to me, we've made all the protests, et cetera, that, uh, uh, that I feel comfortable making on behalf of the select board. Um, and we'll, we'll see what we get. And, uh, you know, uh, we can, we can have more discussions with them if it turns out that uh, it looks like we were treated unfairly relative to uh, uh, to other towns to um, compared to the uh, the incumbent uh, ISPs, etc. Uh, anyway, so that is uh, that's a summary of the uh, the call. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Um, Anne Marie, I'm sure you were consulted by MJ. Does does what I said differ from uh, uh, what I repeated? Differ from anything that you heard from her or discussed uh, with no, her? No, no, that was pretty much what you know. The conversation that she had with MBI and and uh, Senator Moran's office, the the phone call. Um, I think. By the, the way, other I... thing, the other thing that was also brought up was whether you know. Um, the the letter i mean the the concerns and were were valid um however the unknown of what mbi and the results of this challenge process and the adjudication period and what that report is going to say also i think played a factor so um mbi hasn't had the opportunity to report out yet and um i think once that report comes and we take a look at um the report itself, you know, we can revisit if we feel as though there are still, you know, some some questions and concerns that we have. At least we have now a conversation, a couple conversations with MBI, and we have, you know, contacts with MBI as an individual town, which I'm sure not many towns have. <laughs> so, you know, I think in that way, the letter was um, served a purpose. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there once MBI and NTIA has an opportunity to review the uh, report from MBI. Um, I should say that uh, that MJ also um, uh, told them that uh, uh, part of the uh, call it uneasiness of um, town residents, our committee and others, was that uh, once the rebuttal process starts, uh, the way the regulations were written, um, we were totally in the dark. And, uh, you know, we can, had continued at that point to be continually in the dark. And they, she got, a, you know, a passing acknowledgement that, yes, the regulations don't, at that end, don't have a whole lot of transparency in them. So, um, okay. Uh, if, we, if there were a do-over, there'd be other things that would, uh, would be incorporated. But there won't be a do-over, as far as I can tell. Um, I did thank her, and I, and I, I wanted her to thank you, uh, to thank... Uh, the whole committee, um, and if you could repeat that again, um, Anne Marie, uh, for agreeing Absolutely. to get to get to get together on a Thursday afternoon for a special meeting for what could have been a uh, you know a relatively complex discussion as we walk them through a complex letter. Um, once again, thank them for the uh, the consideration of uh, uh, keeping on our side. Um, I will say um, uh, after the fact, in terms of of, uh, of special meetings, I. Uh, I got asked to uh, to sit in on the there's a a workshop on on Friday on the uh, uh, comprehensive wastewater management plan to uh, to comply with the new Title V septic regulations and the um, the complexity of that and the uh, uh, the eye popping numbers in terms of um, what potential costs to, uh, to individual homeowners is going to be. Uh, vastly overshadows, uh, you know, uh, frankly, any concern about uh, uh, you froze, uh, Bob. Uh, uh, Bob, you're you're freezing a little bit. I see Pocasset still has internet issues. Uh, yeah. 
Bob, we've Bob. lost your audio. We lost Bob. Um, oh, I hear uh, audio connecting. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes, we Brian. hear you. Now we don't see you, but we hear you. Yeah, I turned off video again. I am three feet away from my modem, and I don't have. I have bare service. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Welcome to my world. Um, well, uh, again, my motivation continues to try to fix cable, <laughs> fix broadband service here. But uh, again, the issue is that the the town is going to have a lot bigger um, issues to 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 bring up and. Uh, uh, I guarantee the C CWMP is going to concern most of the time a town meeting next uh, next May when it comes up for approval. Um, so with that, um, you know, we'll see where we go. Um, so, hey, Bob, uh, so a question on B challenge. What's next for the committee? What do we do? Um, we uh, wait and see what we get, I think, is that's what the select board, that's what uh, MJ said. Just we'll see what they uh, uh, they offer us in terms of eligibility um, yeah. when, the, when, when this comes out. I don't think um, that letter, as I said, is public record. Um, we can, uh, will be public record once we have our next meeting and approve the uh, October 10 minutes. And at that point, it's posted and we can, uh, we can circulate it far and wide. So uh, um, when do we hear about the B challenge uh, um, results? Um, uh, uh, last week was the deadline. The, the 18th was the deadline to send those in to uh, uh, send a package into NTIA. And they said uh, they uh, the MBI folks told MJ it would be uh, six weeks to two months before they come back with uh, with a decision. Um, so, so so December. Christmas. <laughs> so Merry Christmas. Okay. Yeah, okay, got it. All right. Yeah, okay. right. Or or we get coal in our stocking. We'll see. Okay. You know, hey, that might be a good analogy. If we get nothing, we'll we'll post something <laughs> on the uh Facebook page of a picture of a uh a stocking filled with coal with MBI's name on it. Okay. Uh anyway. Um and also uh, I, I mean Circulating a letter that's in draft form that hasn't been approved by the select board is probably not good practice. <laughs> I wouldn't advocate for circulating a letter specifically for the select board approval that hasn't been approved by the select board. If it's, it's attached to the minutes, yes, rightfully so. But if people want to, you know, publicly access it, they can. I don't think it's wise to deliberately circulate a letter that is was still in draft form that the um, select board hasn't approved. I we'd think probably what's... then edit a new text altogether, given that we've passed the deadline. So uh, it makes sense to it, if, if we if we need once we see the results, we might have a different letter to write, and we might be copying all of the text into it. But it would be a very different uh, letter. What what's so. really relevant in there, especially, is the um, uh, the appendices. Um, I think that's got kind of chapter and verse of, of uh, where some of the gaps, et cetera, are appendix one, A, B, C, D, and E. Um, uh, I think that is, is, is useful to hang on to as a, uh, as a reference, but it is, uh, again, it is public record. Um, uh, so if anybody. Right. I know it's public record, but for the committee to deliberately. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not suggesting that. That's what I, that's what I, I, that's how I, you know, I don't think that's a good, I, I don't think this committee yeah, should do uh, that. No, <laughs> I, I, I agree. And I did not mean that. I just wanted to okay, point out great. that, uh, just that wanted the, to clarify. The, the, the information on all of the, uh, all of the jot and tittle of all of the specific issues um, is in, is on the record right now in our record. Um, and uh, we can, as, as Brian pointed out, we can refer back to that. Uh, that appendix and uh, the specifics, right. Right. maybe with some right. of the introductory paragraphs. Again, it, you know, saying it's from the select board with a signature line from the select board obviously is uh, uh, is specifically not um, uh, not appropriate. Get it, right. I, I, I think we just start a new draft of whatever we need to write. Just or probably it's it's the rough draft, and we write it towards what it needs to do next. So, 
I just wanted to ask a quick technical question to Brian. So from what I gather in reading all this, essentially, um, even though the uh, the select board or, or MJ has been satisfied, the, the fact is MBI in, in actuality essentially didn't follow their own rules by listing these uh, rebuttals when in fact they're supposed to reject them up front. Is that correct? That appear It appears so based on our understanding of the text and frequently revisiting of it that they should have been rejected before if that wasn't what they planned to do they should have laid the they should have laid the situation out differently so that everyone knew that in advance right so they essentially didn't follow their own rules and now uh, we're satisfied or mj is satisfied that even though they didn't follow the letter of the law that they will in fact um examine each rebuttal from from the uh internet providers to uh to determine whether or not they're valid at that I point hope. we we don't know exactly yeah. where during the um uh, adjudication process that was done um uh and it, it, uh, again the inference that mj had was that they sounded uh uh they were they were working hard trying to work through all of this from us and all the other uh the other towns and and uh uh, or should I say the rebuttals coming in for other towns. So um, they were going through a lot of, uh, a lot of documentation, but again, that's just an inference. Right. Really be curious okay. who the three people are, because my guess would be Colin and Jen, but the question is who's the third. Um, I will, uh, again, I will be at the meeting on, on uh, wastewater on Friday. So I will ask. Hmm. Be good because it would be insightful who how I up in the organization was making good went so right okay um, moving on to uh, gap network two I don't have any specific information about uh, when those uh, new um, eligibilities or awards will be announced um, I did talk to uh, MJ again dealing with the uh, uh, the Falma squeaky wheel um uh question etc and i pointed out that in gap network one we were uh the towns of uh falmouth and sandwich um uh both got uh and mashpee all got uh gap network one awards and um from what we uh, again from the past uh meeting we know that um uh ellen cummings had told uh uh, the technology council that they were telling the uh, the folks in Falmouth that after they they uh, dealt with the grant requirements by 2026 of serving all the unserved and underserved in Falmouth, they intended to serve the rest of the town with uh, with BIOS uh, as far as they could. Uh, when exactly we don't know, um, uh, and they were upgrading um, again the. Uh, uh, the equipment in the uh, in the COs uh, to do that, and um, I talked to and MJ said that uh, it'd be appropriate for her to give a call to Ellen Cummings and point out uh, that two of those COs are right on the border of um, uh, of areas of uh, of Bourne that are unserved by FiOS right now. Uh, in fact, the sandwich. Um, uh, CO is in fact in the town of Bourne and could easily serve uh, uh, Sagamore Beach and Sagamore. Um, and the southern half, uh, for instance, the 563 phone exchange is served out of the, the depot road CO. Uh, and uh, the town, she would say the town of uh, Bourne would appreciate if the equipment there were at least upgraded in anticipation of being able to serve the south part of uh, Bourne and those parts of Bourne. Um, uh, so uh, the the equipment's not the issue. The equipment is very inexpensive. I don't think they're going to have a problem with that. The yeah. issue is pulling uh, the fiber. Yeah, understood. Uh, if um, the uh, I said the approval letter, uh, the support letter that uh, we filed for Bead Network One for Gap Network One, apologies, um, presumably is is still in effect for uh for gap network too and if they they did say they were going to do anything in born they they would have used it 
Um, no other towns that I've heard of have been approached for a support letter for Gap Network 2 that hadn't already been approached for Network 1. So presumably those, uh, those letters are still uh, usable and in effect. Um, so um, when, whenever, if anyone hears when Gap Network 2 is going to be announced, uh, let us know and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is failing worse and worse here. Uh, I got to take some more hay fever medicine. Uh, uh, okay, that's it for item B. Item C, digital equity implementation plan recommendations. Uh, the select board hasn't discussed our, uh, our letter of recommendations back, so that's on the back burner. So I'll ask MJ to, uh, if she can to put that on the, uh, the agenda at some point. Um, there was a, uh, uh, a tech council meeting uh, that happened um, uh, last week, but I was uh, uh, unable to get a, uh, enough of a connection to sign on. Brian, were you able to sign on? Yeah. So I couldn't hear you. Which meeting? I attended so many last week. Uh, oh, this is the uh, uh, there was a technology council uh, meeting last Wednesday, I believe. Oh yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, nothing, nothing really to report uh, that's relevant. Yeah, I was on the meeting too, and I there was really uh, not a whole lot to add. To what we've already talked about. Okay. Um, so uh, the broadband coalition um, did not have any uh, any meetings that I saw notified notifications of. So that uh, uh, that was um, nothing to report there. Um, uh, again, uh, under liaison with. Uh, with other towns, um, uh, Jed, I'm going to insert once again. You you sent a communication about um, what uh, uh, Verizon's broad plans were, and um, essentially it's to expand in the ten states that they're already serving with FiOS, um, and they are already, uh, as I said, expressed interest um, or you know a desire or a plan to serve all of the town of Falmouth. Right. Um, has, has did they say anything specifically to the uh, um, to the light plant board at all? Right. So no. So that was a press release from Verizon, and that's I sent it out because that's like the most Verizon will ever say in public. <laughs> you know, you don't get much out of them. That happened to have been a press release uh, relative to a financial re release, right? To the quarterly yeah. report. So they that's when that came out. So basically when they were talking to investors, they'll say stuff. And that's about the only time we get anything out of them is what I've found. But so I thought I'd pass it on because it was broadband strategy. Um, as far as the light board goes, the light board has been trying to get Verizon to attend a meeting. They haven't attended at this point. Um, okay. And in fact, the light board has no meetings uh, planned right now. Um, they're still waiting for the CTC to do the report from Falmouth Net. Um, a note in the latest minute said that um, New England Broadband hasn't provided any information to CTC to complete the report. So they're a little frustrated with that. Um, so they're just kind of waiting and they have, they're also lamenting the fact that they don't have any budget. And every time they go to the town for capital or even expense budget, in fact, they then, in other words, they try to get some money to hire someone to, this may sound familiar, someone to work on chasing down um, grant funding, and they get turned down. Mm -hmm. So not nothing's going on. That's basically the end of the story there. Um, one point under um, other towns here, and uh, again, this is, this is an election matter, but um, uh one of uh, a, a well-known person in town is running as a write-in candidate for the uh assembly delegate seat from the town of Bourne since uh George Slade is not seeking um further uh, uh to continue as another for another term um and i mentioned this to the this fellow is Wayne Sampson if you haven't seen the the signs around um, 
I mentioned to him that, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the county or at least uh, the Cape Cod Commission um, would have an opportunity be, to be more involved in a number of different parts of uh, broadband, including digital equity, uh, including perhaps um, uh, citing one of the people from the uh, uh, what, what was the name of it? The uh, the Matt, the uh, Connection Corps as part of uh, the uh, AmeriCorps um, contingent, and he said. Um, those, if he gets elected, those are issues he'd be willing to, um, to talk to, uh, me or us about. So, um, you know, we would have a, I hadn't approached George Slade on any of this before, but, uh, uh, if Wayne does get written in and elected, um, he would be, uh, interested to, uh, to hear, uh, what the opportunities are. Um, we should well, put that to okay. him if the, or whoever our rep ends up being since uh, it'll probably take several months to get that underway and, uh, you know, lined up in time for the sun next summer. So, you know, that right. probably ends up being a fall project for us. Right. So we'll, you know, after the election, we'll, uh, we'll see where that goes. I don't know exactly when they, uh, uh, the new um, assembly delegates take office, but, uh, you know, we certainly can talk to him beforehand. Um, uh, again, uh, yes. Has there been conversation about a more regional approach to resolving these um, internet service itch- issues at well, the there county was the, level. I mean, the, they're the, more, they're so much more enabled and have the resources like a grant writer to uh, apply for, you know, these types of grants to service the communities. Um, I think that is a perfect, uh, uh, you know, a perfect role for either the county or the Cape Cod Commission to take. Again, the Cape Cod Commission just released their uh, their broadband report for the uh, for the whole county, and it it kind of echoes the exactly what we have been saying about digital equity in Bourne. In fact, you know, it looks like a lot of cut and paste was done there. Um, but having said that. Um, I know there be uh, uh, certainly uh, a willingness. I don't know if there's capacity on the Cape Cod Commission staff to do that, uh, but uh, certainly that's something that could be brought up within the Assembly of Delegates or to the commissioners. And uh, uh, you know, maybe uh, something like the uh, uh, the Tech Council, uh, who have a number of uh, town members on board, maybe that would be the um, uh, you know, maybe the champion to take this forward. And we yeah, could, we I'm could just trying to give... think of, I'm just trying to think of the pathway that, yeah. that, you know, to get there. Yeah. Um, we want to get on. Still says they've discussed it. I uh, never heard the outcomes of those discussions, but he says it's been a discussion topic in the past. Like, do they, yeah. it, it, what yeah. role, if any, do they play as a regional mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. hub for this? I mean, in they offer the service, right? I mean, we, we, mm-hmm. we have IT service for our community from Barnesville County. So yeah. it would it would make sense that we could get so much more accomplished and service so many more, you know, um people across the Cape if it was if there was a more regional approach. Again, this uh American Connection Corps individual uh for two twenty twenty five uh, would be the uh, a perfect way to do that. It's it's mostly funded by somebody else. Um, it's uh, administered by the county. Um, certainly, they could find a place to have this sit at a desk at the commission. This person at a desk at the commission or someplace else, and uh, act as kind of a, a, a coordinator. Maybe with uh, you know do do a lot of the uh, the groundwork with some uh, oversight from uh, uh, from um, David Still Tupper or somebody else, or maybe somebody on the commission staff proper. Um, uh, I had a brief, a couple of brief communications with Beth Albert, who has since retired, as I understand. And she said, uh, yes, this is something we want to pursue. We, it, it has not bubbled up high on any agenda. So it's a matter of identifying which agenda um, we want to, uh, we want to get this on and who we want this to start, uh, who we want to start considering this process. But you're absolutely right. I think this is, uh, a lot of this is much bigger than the town of Bourne. And there are a lot more resources out there. You know, certainly we have no resources whatsoever. You know, you heard uh, Jed say that uh, 
the light plant was was not able to hire a consultant. Well, the consultant for us ought to be the county, or realistically. That's where all of the uh, uh, resources and expertise lie. So, um, you know, I, if, um, uh, I think it might be appropriate to contact other towns and see if we can uh, either get the tech council uh, or the municipal league, I can't remember the name of that organization, um, uh, et cetera, to approach the, uh, uh, the Cape Cod commission or the, or the assembly of delegates to take this up. Okay. In any case, if, uh, um, if Wayne Sampson gets, um, uh, gets elected, um, I'm, I'm, I have an agenda item that I'll, I'll bring this up to him in specific about, uh, uh, getting this on the agenda specifically with with trying to get the uh, AmeriCorps supervisor or whoever uh, funds AmeriCorps to um, uh, to think about uh, funding a uh, or providing a space for a person next year, and it won't be until next September. But get that uh, that position on the agenda so we can get the application in in uh, Brian April. Is that when that goes in? Uh, excuse me. Um. I, I it was it was spring this year. I think we should just email them and say, hey, you know, let's we're starting to prep for 2025. You know, what 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 are you targeting? I think we should just start the conversation with the county and uh, with AmeriCorps, and you know, yeah. just and the, see where it goes. And the person we got a lull in, in the grant schedule, so you right. know, we may as well yeah. use it. Right. The person in charge of that was uh, the fellow in Iowa, Scott McFarland. Yeah. Okay. I'll forward okay. you his email and MBI's. Yeah lead right um and uh uh as soon it, it, again after the election if um if if wayne uh uh samson gets elected and you know i'll start copying him on some of this stuff well because you know he's that's an immediate ear on this okay um so that completes uh you know liaison with other towns um uh so the next uh, the next meeting, I'm checking the calendar where that will be <laughs> uh, the looks like the sixth. Is that right? Well, yeah, it would be the seventh. Uh, I'd like to seventh. suppose, Bob, that we don't need to meet in two weeks. I mean, I'm looking at this agenda. I don't see anything going on that requires us to meet again in two weeks. I don't know how everybody okay. else feels. Okay. You know, Do you want to space it to three? So this next one or yeah let's try that i was thinking three maybe four but let's just say three just to see how it goes and push it to the 14th of november yeah you can always cancel the meeting if you don't have really anything to discuss yeah um, but uh three weeks okay. four weeks especially getting into the holiday season too right it's really yeah. we don't we don't have anything until mbi publishes the uh, right that's outcome, the end. Right. so we don't right. we don't really know I'd say three um, weeks can, is fine, and we can call a special one if it gets spicy. Um, Jed, I'd like to add one or more item, uh, and I, I just put that down uh, and just say, uh, uh, why don't we call it a, uh, um, a bar, uh, discussion of uh, a Barnstable County wide approach uh, for broadband, and we can put that in, and um, uh, you know if that involves. Or maybe, uh, yeah, or a regional effort for. Just call it call it regional. So if we need yeah. to, we can involve the uh, a lot of the south coast towns from the uh, broadband coalition, um, who uh, you know they frankly look to us as a you know um, uh, the way to do this, or uh, you know certainly sources of information. Much of it yeah. thanks to uh, to Brian's deep dive into into the this the arcane. Uh, uh, MBI regulations. So, is this what you wanted in the agenda? You want it somewhere else? Uh, do you want to move that down uh, to just before liaison with other towns? Okay, yeah. Or maybe just that might be the appropriate place to put it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, down further. Um, oh, guy, I get it. Hang on. Yeah. Pardon. I'm uh, squinting here. Right there. Yeah, that's that looks good. Yeah, okay. these all sort of blend together, but uh, uh, we can work this out. Um, just point of information: I will be um, 
uh, I will be in the West Coast at that point, but I can um, I can do the meeting at 0600. Okay. As long as my uh, as long as my uh, my son and daughter in law put a pot of coffee on early. <laughs> okay, I'll send this out okay. today. Okay, uh, with that at uh, 945, a new record for a fast meeting. Um, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. John moves. Jed seconds. Aye. Uh, aye. Ryan says aye. Aye. Bob says aye. Jed says aye. John says aye. Okay, with that, uh, we are adjourned, and uh, thank you all very much. And uh, keep our ears to the ground to see if we can hear anything anything more from MBI about when, uh, when any, any of this stuff is announced. Um, I'm going to, again, talk to uh, MJ about trying to make a phone call to uh, – uh, to Verizon to try to ascertain their plans and to tell them to remember Bourne in their uh, planning. Okay, very good. Everybody have a uh, a great Thanksgiving since we won't be talking before then. We'll talk to you later. Recording Bye -bye. stopped. Thanks for